Evelyn and Elmi, and then Ivan on the piano, and I'm Dennis. So the first song that we're going to start with is hymn number 341, To God Be the Glory, hymn number 341. Let's all sing together. continue singing in a moment, but right now Marshall has something to share for us. Is Marshall here? Good morning and happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Man, it's good to be home. Amen. Anyway, uh, today uh, I just wanted to welcome any uh, uh, and everyone who is not from here. Can I see a raise of hands so we can embarrass you? Yeah? That whole row? Where are you all from? Oh, you're from here? You see, that's how far along I've been gone for three years, and I don't know who's here and who's not. Anybody else who has visitors? Are, are these visitors up front? Anthony Demi's, Demi's family? The, all right. So oh, the all, all right. All the varios, all the way down. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, yes. <laughs> California, welcome, welcome, right on. I saw another hand back there, did, uh, no, no, okay. Well, praise the Lord, welcome to our beautiful, beautiful church here, and a nice rainy evening, if you hadn't seen Hilo weather, you got a taste of it last night, and we were at Coconut Island enjoying a family outing, 
with about 30 of us in the rain. And so it was hilarious, but we didn't stop. After three hours, we finally said, yeah, I think we should go now. You know, but you know, it was really, really wonderful. Anyway, at this time, we have some announcements and we're gonna call up Auntie. Uh, <clears throat> Happy Sabbath. Happy and Sabbath. just to make sure um, that it does get announced, it's in your bulletin that we have food basket on Monday. I saw David walk by and I didn't know if Marshall knew to do that. So from 10, 10 in the morning till 11. For if you know somebody who needs or if you want to come get a bag of food, we do that right out here. But the announcement I want to make, because I'm not going to be here next Sabbath, and I want to give an, uh, for your information, is we are actually having Friends Club this summer. We do it during the school year at school, but we're going to have another summertime one as we did last year. And I just thought it was kind of cute, because when, we, when I first started Friends Club, Marshall was our pastor Rufus for years, and now he's back home, so you can come. <laughs> But now we're, we're going to have Uncle Alan Lips, so it's going to be fun. And, and I will have res registration forms in the back by next Sabbath. Um, please forgive me. They do have to be filled in um, with all sorts of information for legalities reasons. So uh, if you know any boys and girls for, that are in kindergarten up to fourth grade, it'll be happening next month, the middle weeks of July two days a week, so everyone is invited. And please pray for us. We're, I'm actually really excited this year um, because of the help. We, are, um, we have two former students that are coming to help that graduated in the COVID year, 2020, I think it was. And we, we have Pathfinders that are coming to help, and of course, seasoned help too. So pray for Friends Club this summer, and if you know any children, you know, make sure you get a registration and get it back to me or TR at the school. Thank you. Just a short one. We have Marshall that's going to be giving us the message this morning. But, you know, when he's here, we take good advantage. He's also making stuff for potluck and from what I got I just got told make sure all of you all of you stay for potluck he overcooked again so please come and join us for potluck after services it'll be up in the gym and uh, if there's no other announcements I see just a couple more here and one that caught my eye is about the all former Hilo Pathfinders greatly appreciate if you could return your class A uniforms uh, not including your sash, though. That's yours for life, you know, all the honors you earned, of course. But if you have a uniform that's still in good condition and others could use it, then please return it. Uh, food basket, as you can see over there on the times and dates. And, of course, Father's Day. How many fathers we got out there? Right on. Well, join the club. It's going to be a great sermon today, so... Be prepared for a wonderful Sabbath, and let's carry on with our worship. Together in singing our next hymn, hymn number 86, How Great Thou Art, hymn number 86. And we are going to do verses 1, 3, and 4, just 1, 3, and 4.
sing my song, my Savior God today. I'll greet the Lord, I'll greet the Lord, and sing my song, my Savior God. How great the world, how great the world. Verse 3. And when I think that God his son has found me, sent him to die, I still can take That on the cross my burden gladly bury, he played and died to take away my sin. This is my song, my sin you got today. Number 633. Number 633. Yeah. 633. Amen. 633. All right. Everybody get that? 633 or the words on your screen. We're going to do 1, 3, and 4 again. Verses 1, 3, and 4. Okay.
say no fitting sewing. No. Yep. We're going to stand together and sing hymn 692, The Lord is in His Holy Temple. Oh, we're going to do one more song. Let's do 428, Sweet By and By. Oh, you're waiting for 428, Sweet By and By. Ready for 692? Oh, 692? Yes? Okay. 692, the Lord is in his holy temple. Please stand. so wonderful that uh, we can meet together, come together, and still have the freedom to worship together. 
what a privilege, where others may not. We thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day, a day where a family of God from all over the world can come together and meet. We praise you for the visitors who have come to enjoy our service today. And as our service continues, may you open our hearts and our minds to what you want us to learn and take from here throughout the week. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning, church. You know, on your um, tithe envelope, there's a promise from Malachi 3.10. And um, I'm going to go ahead and read it. It says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. When I read this, I stopped at the part where it says, have room enough for it. And I started thinking of that room could be our cupboard, our wallet, good health, our bills, our car, and so there's so many ways that God blesses us, gives back. And um, this past Monday, I 
was given $500, totally unexpected, from a sister. She took me shopping. She said, here, this is for you. And I was shocked. I didn't know what I did to deserve that. I paid my usual tithe, but I was very grateful. Then I thought, well, don't you need that? You had plumbing problems. She said, no, just take it before I change my mind. <laughs> so I said, okay, and I put it in my purse. I was very grateful, very thankful, and I started thanking God for that. But there was another time where um, I was about to catch the bus. I had only 15 minutes for the bus would come and I was short one penny, just one penny. I had 24 cents. And in those days in Oahu, it cost 25 cents. I got kicked off the bus once as a student for not having enough bus fare. So I wasn't gonna chance it. It was the last bus. I needed that penny and I prayed. I said, Lord, please, I can't walk home. It's too far. It's too dark. I don't have the courage to ask anybody for one penny. Just please give me a penny, just one penny, that's all. So I was about to cross the street where the bus was, which was across the street. The light turned red, I had to stop. I was so desperate, all I could think of was, Lord, please, the bus is going to come. I, only, I just need one penny. And so in my despair, I looked down, and in the shadow of the curb, I bent down, and there was one penny. That was many, many years ago. I had no idea what I did to deserve even that, but God supplied it then too. So whether it's $500 or one penny, God will come through for you. Show him our heads. Dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful for your faithfulness and your mercy. Your timing is always perfect. Help us, dear Lord, with the blessings that you give to us, that we may go out and feed a hungry world, rescue those that are staggering to death. Lord, teach us your ways, and help us to be forever grateful for every single moment of life that you bless us with. Until you come again, Lord, and we'll see your lovely face Help us to be ready for that day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
kids, time for the children's story. While they're coming up here, Auntie Tony just volunteered to have the story for next week. So thank you, volunteers, because I always feel like if I start talking to someone, they're going to think, oh, I know why she's coming over here. She wants to. <laughs> so volunteers are really appreciated. So thank you. Good job. I feel like we've already had a children's story. Thank you, Kaya. That was beautiful. Um, what weekend is this? Do you know what special day is happening tomorrow? Father's Day. That's true. So I had a story already that was going to be for uh, David Schaefer. Where is he? Is he here? But it got postponed for Father's Day. My husband last night said, do you have a children's story? I said, yeah. He said, is it a Father's Day children's story? I said, oh. So another time, <laughs> it's about your sister. So, or sister-in-law, sister-in-law, Carrie. So anyway, when I was a kid, I lived in College Place, Washington. And it is uh, Walla Walla University now, but it was Walla Walla College at the time. And my dad was a professor there, so that's where we lived. And it was kind of fun. It was a really special town. I would say at least 50% of it was probably Adventist. And back then, it was very, very safe. Uh, we didn't have cell phones. You could wander the whole town for the whole day, and your parents didn't worry about you. Uh, I remember when we were in eighth grade and uh, through academy, a friend and I would ride our bikes oh, I don't know how many miles, we must have gone 20 miles all over into the next town, out into the wheat fields and around, and no cell phone, nobody worried about you. It was a wonderful place. But when I was one, uh, in first grade, um, the bus driver lived just down the street. He was also the principal. And so we were the first ones on the bus and the last ones off the bus. So we had a long bus ride. Our school was at least, uh, I would say, 30, 35 minutes away if you drove straight. But of course, he was the, we only had three buses at the time, and we had a huge school. Uh, my eighth grade year, I remember I was a W. I was a Wagner at the time. So that put me at the end of the alphabet. So I was, I think, 37. Um, and there were a couple kids after me. So we had a huge class. And my brother's class was even bigger, so they had to split his eighth grade class into two rooms. So this was a big school. So taking the bus all the way around town, picking up all those kids, it took a long time. Well, it was kind of fun, though. But when, we were, when I was in third grade, we discovered there was another place we could go to at a bus stop that was not that far away. I think I had to walk seven blocks, and it was like 45 minutes later. The bus driver had already gone all the circles all around the town, and it was the straight shot after that to the school, pretty much picking up the, the country folks still. But So we decided we would go to that bus stop. Or, um, actually, I'm not sure where my brother and sister were at that point. I think they were going to a diff different school, but that's the bus stop I went to. So I remember one day I was going along, and it was fun to go because I 
knew so many people on the street. We had uh, the Masdens and the Bennetts, which were engineers at the college. Next door to them was a retired person from the college. There was the accountant next uh, to them, and next to them was uh, Bal Harry's, which was the theologian there, and then ours, which my dad was education psychology, and then there was, you know, the pastor, and of course the bus driver was uh, also our principal, so we just knew everybody. And in fact, after that was the Coleman's. I didn't know the Coleman's very well, I knew their name, but I would meet them in Guam when we lived there. They, became, they were twins and they became the Continental Pilots, and I taught their children, so it was kind of funny. But uh, I was going along, I don't know if I left the house late, or if I, my favorite thing to do coming home from school would be to kick rocks. And I'd keep the same rock from the bus stop all the way home and you know, see if you could keep it straight and going without stopping. That was good soccer practice, I guess. But I got to the bus stop and there was nobody there. Now this was a big bus stop. There was like seven kids there usually. And there wasn't a one in sight and there wasn't a bus in sight. And I'm thinking, oh no, what do I do now? I can't go home. My mom has a preschool at home, and although that would be fun, she doesn't drive and she couldn't take me because her kids are there. And I thought, what am I gonna do? Now my bus stop was right at the corner of college, of College Avenue, and my father's education psychology building was right there, and when he was in his office, he could look out the bus stop and check on me. But he had an early morning class, and he was already teaching. So I'm thinking, oh no, what am I gonna do? So I went up to the secretary, his secretary, and I said, where's my dad? And she said, well, he's teaching. Well, where's he teaching? Because I was uh, really upset. I didn't know what I was doing. Whatever I was gonna do, it was going to either be hard on my dad because he'd take me, or I'd, I just felt bad and guilty. She said, well, he's down in the amphitheater room. So I went down there and I'm probably in third grade, and I open that heavy metal door, and I'm standing at the top, and it's an amphitheater. So it goes down, down, down. And to me, I was in third grade, and I had my lunch bag. Well, back then we had a hard lunch box that opened. And in my other bag, I had hand, I had my book bag, and I'm standing there, and it looks like forever down there. It looks like, uh, like the lion's den should be down there. And I was kind of imagining maybe my dad would be really, really mad and the lions, I had an active imagination, okay. What if he's so mad that he yells at me right in front of all his students? Oh, the students, oh dear. And I didn't know what to do. But my dad was teaching and he looked up and he stopped. And all of his students followed his gaze and they all turned around. These were um, graduate students. And they looked at me and my heart just went down to my feet. So I knew what I had to do. They were all waiting on me. And I went down those big cement stairs which were extra wide so you went plop, walk, plop, because they were also steep, plop. And everybody watched every step I took till I got down to the very bottom and it was dead silent and I could just feel their eyes in the back, going through my back. I was, Dad, I missed the, the bus. And he just said, it's okay. He said, why don't you go sit in the back row and when class is over, I'll take care of it. And just to have that reassurance at that moment that Dad said, it was okay. Dad said, I will take care of it. Made all the difference in the world. And I went up the stairs and they weren't, I, it didn't bother me anymore. I felt light and I sat in the back. And I haven't a clue what he said. I don't remember any of that. I was just thinking, ah, it's okay. Dad's going to take care of it. And he did, he actually had the secretary take care of it. She ended up being the one that took me all the way to school and back. So that took at least an hour out of her day because it was clear into Oregon. You cross the county, uh, the state line to go to school. And she came back, but all day long I was thinking, 
that's my dad. Thank you. <laughs> it could have been so much worse. So I just want you to think about a text in the Bible that says, I have loved you. This is Jesus speaking. I have loved you with an everlasting love. How long is everlasting? That's forever. Forever means into eternity, it means right now to eternity. I've loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn thee. My dad could have yelled at me. He could have said, I bet you were kicking rocks again all the way to the bus stop. He could have said, what'd you do? You didn't get up on time. You left the house late. Now you're taking an hour out of my day or my secretary's. He could have said all of that either in private or in public, and he didn't. He said, it'll be okay. I'll take care of it. And that's what your God is saying to you. I have loved you, and that's how I draw you. There's uh, another story about a prodigal son in the, in the Bible, right? And he spends his father's money, and his father only wants him to come home because I love you. That's what your God in heaven is saying. And he gave you all daddies that do the same thing for you, right? Your daddies are kind, wonderful people. And I want you to go home and say, thank you, daddy, for taking care of me. Thank you for making me feel loved and wanted and appreciated. And if you don't have a daddy, there are some of those, I'm sure. I want you to go thank the person in your life, your mama for sure, because she's being your mommy and your daddy. But maybe there's some man in your life that's helped your family out a lot, and you can say thank you to them. Thank you for listening. You may go back. Isn't that a beautiful children's story? And, and I, I just want to say thank you to the Lays for giving me a bag of chips, sweet potato chips, and a little devotional book. So all the fathers, I hope, got one today. Thank you for the Lays ministry. Um, I just want to th just thank the Lord for me being here. And all that I can see, which I can't see very well, but I can see faces <clears throat> that are here today praising the Lord. Amen? And we're here. This is a congregational prayer time where we are going to pray to the Lord, our friend, our, our Jesus. And I'll pray that that's your personal Savior, that you guys might have a, a silent request. Raise your hand. And I know we have some, I just got informed from Emily that um, uh, Jubilant's mom is in the hospital in, in Oahu. So let's keep her in prayer. And I don't know anyone else offhand, but we all want to pray for our families and our loved ones, yeah? So if you want to come up in the front, you're welcome to and kneel or kneel right where you're at as we have our prayer now. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we are so blessed, Lord, to be here today on this beautiful Sabbath day. Father God, we all have been so uh, busy during the week with work and things that we do. I just pray, Lord, that we make that time this, to be with you in the morning or whenever we can. Some might be in the evenings. Sis. Lord, we come to you, Lord, because we know that the time is short. We see the signs, Lord. You say in Matthew 24, 7, that nations will rise up against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. And 
there will be famines and pestilence and earthquakes. Father, it's happening. We see it in this world, Lord. It's coming to a close. The earth is shaking. And I just pray that each one of us, Lord, will have, be ready. And that means at all times, because our days could end today. We don't know. So at all times, help us to be ready with a forgiving heart. Help us to have that fruit of the spirit, that love and joy and peace, patience and kindness goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, Lord. That character is the only thing we're going to take with us when we go to heaven, Lord. We want to be like you, Lord, and we strive to be perfect, Lord, even though we are wretched sinners. But you came and you sent your son down to die for each and every one of us, Lord, so that we have an opportunity to redeem ourselves, Lord, and be there in heaven with you, Lord, when you come to take us home. Oh, Father God, I just thank you for sending uh, people back to the church. At one time, there wasn't that many people coming to the church because of the COVID, and it's still out there. But Father, I see more faces coming back, Lord. We want to be like you. You're our example. You came to the sanctuaries on Sabbath and worshiped, Lord, and prayed. And you're our example, Lord. Help us to be more like you, to come, to to have uh, fellowship with one another, Lord, so that we can share our thoughts and our prayers for one another, Lord. I pray for my good friend Marshall. And I came this morning. I walked into the cafeteria. I seen him in the kitchen where I, I always see him. That's where he is. That's Marshall, always cooking wonderful foods, Lord. And I know he's cooking up a nice, beautiful sermon for us to be blessed, Lord. I pray that you'll pour your spirit upon him, that he will touch each and every one that's here today, Lord. As we walk away, we'll be filled with the spiritual food. And then we'll go to potluck and have our physical food along with the spiritual food. Thank you so much, Lord, for this day, for giving us another day of life. Continue, Lord, to bless each one and all those that are sick right now, that are struggling. Father God, pull them through. We know you will, because we have faith in you, Lord, and your promises in your word. We ask this all in Jesus' name, amen. Hello. Aloha, everyone. I can't even remember the last time I came up here because I was just too scared because, you know, yeah. Graduation, my eighth grade graduation. Wow. I'm in college now, though. So um, it's so nice to be here at church. And I can't wait to perform the special music. Um, hopefully, you all will be blessed. and. Um, I picked it five minutes ago, so it should be fine, right? <laughs> Just like my Uncle Joey and my dad, so it should be fine. Anyways, um, Let him come. 
It's a blessing to have special music when you have father and daughter sing so beautifully. What a wonderful message. Another message will be coming to us, and it's based on this um, scripture. If you'd like to follow along, it's in Matthew 13. This is a parable. Jesus loves to teach us, talk to us in parables and stories, and this one is going to be good. Matthew 13, 1 to 9. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered and died because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has, hear, has ears, let them hear. Thank you. Am I on? You can hear me? Oh, praise the Lord. Wow, it's been such a long time, and so nice to see everybody here, and wow, so good. So we've, I've, my wife and I and my daughter, we've been back since last Friday, and so we only got 10 days off. You got to still go back and work at the school and stuff like that. And you say, what? There's no school. And they said, but the dormitory is still... Um, there's lots of repairs to do, and we have people that stay over during the summer and things like that. So we're kind of like the caretakers during, even during the summer. And with all the other repairs and things that need to happen throughout the year, keeps us busy. So 
Never a dull moment at Hawaii Mission Academy. And I'll talk more about that a little later. So today, as I start my sermon, um, I, I, was, I had the privilege uh, from the graduating class at Hawaii Mission Academy, um, the senior class, of which I had only known for three years since I had been there, they said, could you please do the, uh, the service uh, for the church service? If you know anything about Adventist uh, high school graduations, it's a three-part thing where you have a Friday night uh, service, you have a Sabbath morning service, and then you have finally the commencement service on Sunday. Well, they asked me to speak at the church service for them on Saturday. And what a privilege that was. Um, and I'll tell you more about that uh, in a moment. But here is part of that um, that I have customized for our church service today. So, um, by the way, are there any um, people that either have graduated from eighth grade or high school here today? Raise your hand. Yes, or college? I'll even take college, and you know, no graduates today. How about, uh, what is that, from preschool? Any preschool graduates? We do have a preschool graduate? Oh, okay, great, we got one hand. So you, you, you sit down and um, I'll call you up later. So don't worry, I'll embarrass you all later. So, okay. So let's start with a word of prayer. Precious Lord, we thank you so much for the opportunity we have to worship and serve you. And in whatever way we can do that, Lord, please use us um, and let none of the actions and words that we say or do go to waste. Rather, Lord, we can look back and say, wow, Lord, you've done a great thing. And thank you for allowing me to be a part of it. So, Lord, may we find that resolve today in our sermon. In your name we pray. Amen. So, here's how it went. To Eric Vandenberg, our conference president, you know he's our new president today, who I know loves and cares for our keiki, our ohana. A president that had, had many of these students Many of you, actually, and some of you who may be going to camp this summer um, and have been involved with the camp that he has done at Waianae for many years. In the ministry at our churches, also as a Pathfinder leader uh, for our conference that has done unbelievable things. And, of course, you know Pathfinders is dear to my heart. I've been a Pathfinder director here, and I can't remember how many years already. Lost count. But it's been a wonderful, wonderful thing. To Mickey Nelson, for those of you who do not know, Mickey Nelson is our education head for our entire conference. She uh, is our education director who has been a light that shines bright for Christian education, a leader whose passion for the gospel message reaches all the campuses. I know she's visited our Mauna Loa School campus numerous times, and to tell you the truth, I can't remember an education director coming to our Mauna Loa School campus so many times as her. And so I praise the Lord that it's not just a name in the conference, but actually a faith that comes. So praise the Lord. To Joe Lee, the principal of Hawaii Mission Academy, who has shown leadership during this pandemic to keep actually our campus in person. You know that we actually got kids from public school that came over and switched over to our campus because their campus was closed. Of course, they have way larger schools, but they still wanted in person. And so we actually got some school kids from the public to come and enjoy their either their, uh, uh, their senior year at the academy and finish off their, they wanted to have a live senior year, not on Zoom or anything else. So we actually had some people come from the public. And he, we had decided on our campus that we were going to stay in person as much as possible, and we did. And praise the Lord for that. In fact, I even have told this principal many of times, and others amongst his peers, that I wish that Jolie was my principal when I was going to Hawaii Mission Academy, 
That's how much I uh, that's how much I see his leadership on the campus, which has changed that campus spiritually like I've never seen before. Praise the Lord. To the faculty. Now, these faculty that I've worked for for three years now, I am proud to work side by side with them in loving care of the students God has placed under our watch as we prepare them to meet our Father God face to face. By the way, are there any faculty here today? Of any school? Stand. Thank you. Thank you. Any more? Well, I'd like to say amen to our faculty, especially here at our Mauna Loa School and any other faculty that's in any other school. Praise the Lord that you are serving where you're at. Um, to the churches, Kona, Kohala, Honoka'a, Hilo, Puna, and Curtis Town, all of these churches I know pray and support uh, what's going on on Hawaiian Mission Academy's campus. And we are so grateful for that. Because of your um, prayers and your support financially, we've been able to send kids who may not ever be able to come to our academy by your support. So praise the Lord. Continue to do that. You don't know how much of a blessing it is to have your financial support and especially your prayers. To the pastors who have served actually on our campus. You realize that our campus has been blessed in these last three years by actually having actual pastors teach the Bible. How is that? We have actual pastors teaching Bible class, and it has made a deep impact on the kids' lives. Some of them who have given their life, some of them who, in fact, one of them who had graduated last year just got baptized uh, one of the seniors, she's an alumni now, but she, you know, it finally just gripped her heart. And normally after high school, it's very rare that, uh, that people get baptized right after. Um, normally, if you don't get them before high school, it's, the statistics are very low. But this lady decided that she wanted to give her heart one year out of high school. and so proud of her for doing that. And it's because of your prayers. It's because of the leadership. And, and of course, these pastors who have prayed, and I have seen them with students one-on-one. -on -one. I have seen them doing the chapels. I've seen them doing all these wonderful things on the campus. And I know all of these pastors. I've known them for years. And to see them on the campus has been such a blessing at Hawaiian Mission Academy. It has changed our academy. Of course, to the parents who have had the faith to send their keiki to our academy, who have trusted God in his work at our campus and beyond. And of course, we currently have three here, Abby, Ethan, Joseph. Yeah, they're all in, our, they are all in my, my dorm ohana. And that is a whole other ministry besides what's happening on the campus that I don't have time to go into because it's already 12 o'clock. So anyway, what? Anyway, it's already 12 o'clock. I've only been talking for five minutes, right? Anyway, to the deans. We have assistant deans like you have on this campus here. You have workers that come from the colleges. We do have them on our campus, and they work in our dormitory. These are college-age students that... Um, worship, that pray, that study, that play sports, that sometimes have to do some discipline along with myself, with the kids and stuff. And um, the kids in the dormitory have learned to run as part of discipline. But you know what? I'm finding out that they're pretty good runners, and uh, we might do something with that later. But uh, right now, it's, uh, it's like, oh, we got to run. Yes, that's what you get for keeping me up. Anyway. Um, so I praise the Lord for our deans. They have been my right hand, my left hand, my right leg, my left leg, everything about me. If I didn't have those deans that are working with me on the campus, in the cafeteria, in the dormitory, I don't think I could do what I do. To the dorm ohana itself, that some of you don't know, from the beginning of Hawaiian Mission Academy, before I had come, 
The year prior to that, we had 19, um, we had 19 students that were foreign and or non-Adventist staying in the dorm, and only two Adventist kids staying in the dorm. Wow, what a ministry, right? Yeah, it can be a wonderful ministry opportunity. Unfortunately, the two that were there that were Adventists were the two Outer Island kids. We had no other Outer Island kids at that time. This coming year, we're looking at 19 from our Outer Island kids that are coming, and only two non-Adventists. It has completely flipped. Now, I praise the Lord that we get the non-Adventists, the Adventists. I praise the Lord for all of them. But to see this, this uh, reaction from our local constituency, from all of the islands who have saying, wow, there's something going on in Hawaii Mission Academy, and we want to be a part of it. Now, needless to say, I know most of the parents. A lot of the parents that the kids are there now, they were actually like youth way back in the day, but now they're parents and they're sending their kids. That's how old I am. Anyway, wow. Anyway, unbelievable. Also, to the freshmen, the sophomores, and the juniors who have watched their senior classmates, this year's seniors have been unbelievable. I don't even know how to put it into words, but the seniors were actually thanking the freshmen and sophomores and juniors for actually being so good to them. Seniors don't do that, but they did this year, and it was such a blessing to see that the upperclassmen were merging with the rest of the school and it has made the school stronger for that to happen. In my first and second year there at Hawaiian Mission Academy, whenever I would, I'm also the food service manager. I wear a lot of hats. But as a food service manager, I would watch what would happen in the cafeteria. And you'd have one class here, you have another class sit there, another class sit there. And rarely would they ever intermingle. This year, you couldn't tell whose class mingled with who, teachers eating with students all over the place. Everybody was all over the place all of the time. It was like a big family. It was such a blessing this year, such a blessing. And, and then finally, to the class of 2022, we were so blessed, like I said, to have them not only be a part of the campus, but in in the maturity that we've seen out of this class, it had actually enhanced the spiritual life on the campus. But at this time, since we have one graduate, can you please come up here? From the preschool? Where'd she go? Come. You can go right in the front here. Now, if I could have a family member or two, maybe an elder or a deacon or two, and come around her and pray for her at this time while we pray. Stay right there. Yeah. You can stand. You can stand. You can stand. Is there any family member that would like to pray for our graduate here? Oh, there we go. A sister. Come. Let's pray a blessing on this. You might say, this is only preschool. No, 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 no. It's a graduation, right? Congratulations. Let's pray. Precious Lord, we thank you so much that Lonnie here has gone through uh, the preschool, and now she is graduated and ready to move on. Lord, be with her and um, continue to love her and also put upon her your spirit so that she can love her classmates, her teacher, and her parents and her sisters and all those around her continue to pour upon her your love. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lani. Congratulations. At age 21, I had the opportunity after graduation and doing some things in my life. I had the opportunity, I got a call from my high school uh, uh, PE teacher, Herbert Fermantes, and he was at Gem State Academy at the time. And he said, hey boy, you like work, Opia? You like come? 
go be my assistant dean in the boys doll. Yeah, come. So I said, why not? I was young. I said, sure. I flew up to Idaho, and for an entire year, I was up there in Idaho, and I had worked with the dormitory boys area, and we had done such a wonderful year. I actually, they actually, um, well, I went skiing, and they were supposed to teach me how to ski, but they abandoned me when we got up there. So I had to learn on my own, and after falling about 100 times, I finally got the hang of it. But, um, but it was such a wonderful and impactful year. And I thought to myself after that year of being an assistant dormitory task force dean, man, that'd be so cool to be a dean one day. But no, I'm not smart enough, or I'm, I, I, I don't know what it takes, and I don't know what kind of education you have to have. So it's probably not going to happen. But that would be really cool if that would happen one day. Two years went by, and I had come back to the Big Island, and I was working now as a chef at the, um, at the Hilton. It was the Hyatt at the time. The Hyatt had just opened up. I applied, I got the job, and I had worked there for almost two years. And in that two years' time, I didn't take any vacation. All of a sudden, I get a phone call from Gem State Academy, and they said, hey, uh, Marshall, you, this is... This is an opportunity for you if you could do it. I would like for you to, the, the class that is graduating, that you were a sponsor for two years ago, they want you to come up and speak for their service, for their church service in Idaho. And I'm like, really? Really? And I'm like, wow, what a privilege. So I said, OK. And it was a few months before. So I said, well, I'm coming. I didn't even I didn't ask my bosses or anything. Yeah, I says I'm coming. You can put me down. Then I went to my workplace a few months before and I said, "Hey, you know what? I got to have this time off because I'm going to go to Idaho and I'm going, you know, and I, and I I need this time off, you know, my week vacation. I didn't take any vacation yet." They said, "You know what? The hotel is too booked. Um, it's at 90 something percent." It's going to be at that time in three months, four months from now, so you can't take off the whole week. Oh, all right. How about just the weekend? You know, I'll, I'll leave on Friday. I'll come back Sunday. I'll come right back work on Monday. And they said, no, we, we need you on that Sunday. We need you on that Monday. I'm sorry. No deal. I'm <laughs> like, really? I've almost worked here for two years, and you're not going to let me get off just for the weekend? No, I am sorry. And then I just said right there, I didn't even have to pray about it. I said, then I quit. And they were like, what? Wait, 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 wait. You're doing what? You're quitting? And he said, yeah, I quit. Wait, 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 wait. Where are you going? And I says, I'm going to go to Idaho, to this little bitty campus, and I'm going to talk to a few of the seniors there about their life and doing their sermon on Saturday on this date. And if you guys won't let me go, and this is three months prior, if you're not going to let me go, then I quit right now. And they're like, no, wait, wait, where are you going again? And they couldn't believe that I was quitting my job to do a, a, a talk. And that's it. And then I was going to fly back. And I'm like, no, if you're not going to let me go and do the Lord's work, then I quit. And they're all like, and the, the head chef and all the other chefs, they came up and they're all like, where are you going again? What are you doing again? Why are you quitting? And they said, I simply asked for the weekend off and you guys wouldn't give it to me, so I quit. And they said, and they says, well, I'm just one of the, what, 100 chefs that are here at the hotel. What's up? And he says, no, you don't understand. You actually show up. You show up for your shifts. You're not drunk. You're not stoned. You're a great worker. And I'm like, is that all it takes? Just showing up to be a great worker? And I said, well, wonderful. But still, oh, you know what? We'll work the schedule. And he says, no, no, no. I understand how this works now. That's corporate. I'm not going to tell you guys to change anything. I'm just going to give you my week's notice prior to that. And then I'm just going to, that'll be it. But I'll work, I'll work all the way till that time. Oh, okay, okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. So anyway, I went there. It was my last week. A week before, I quit. 
I packed my bags. I went to Idaho. I sat. I went up there, and I told them in the sermon how I got there. And people were like, you did what? <laughs> they couldn't believe I quit just to give a sermon to them on that Saturday. They're, by the end of the sermon, people were but basically, they were moved that I actually would make that sacrifice to serve the Lord, to go over there, to just do that, and come back to Hawaii not having a job and wondering what I'm going to do next. And that's exactly what happened. Now what I'm going to do next. That's a whole other story. I'm not even going to touch that. But the Lord has blessed me all the way to this day. I told this same story to the graduating class that I told there, and they were all stunned. They were like, you did what? He says, yes. And I says, if I didn't make that commitment to the Lord then, I don't think I would be on this campus now. I don't think I would be even giving this sermon right now. And I believe that the Lord has led me this far. Praise the Lord. One day I was listening to different people giving graduation speeches on the radio. And, and the, here was one of the lines they said. The good news about the future, they're talking to the graduates of college, the good news about the future is that it's all up to you. Then they said right after that, the bad news about the future is that it's all up to you. How does that sound like for a life plan? There's no God in that statement. And there was no God mentioned ever in any of that statement. In fact, this was a secular a university that they were talking to. But it's all up to you. My question to you today, how has your life been? Has it been the Lord has me in his hand and is leading me? Or has it been all up to you? What has the Lord led you to? and in, so that that will be your ministry. In 1 Timothy, you can turn with me to 1 Timothy 6, verse 6. 1 Timothy 6, verse 6. First Timothy 6, verse 6. This is a graduation speech that I think would be really great. And it goes like this. Now godliness with contentment is great gain. Isn't that great? Godliness with contentment is great gain. For, number verse 7, we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. Now that's a good graduation speech for a Christian. Right? You should know that. You know that at the end, it'll all burn, right? You know that. You know that. We're on our way out. And having food, verse 8, and having food and clothing, with these, we shall be content. At least you got your basics. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. Am I saying being rich is evil? No. But even Jesus had spoke many times about it, about a camel, you know, going through an eye of a needle for a rich man to enter the kingdom and all that stuff. I'm not saying riches mean evil. It does not. Because I know a lot of people who have a lot of resources who have used it for good. And vice versa. Anyway, it continues on verse but those, for verse 10, for the love of money is what? The root of all kinds of evil. You understand what roots are? We're going to get into that in a few minutes. I want you to focus on that. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Wow, that sounds bad. Verse 11, but you, O graduate, <laughs> O man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. Fight 
the good fight of faith. Yeah? Fight the good fight of faith. It's not a stroll in the park, the Christian walk. It never has been and never will be. And if, if you think that coming to church on Sabbath isn't part of the fight, it is. And praise the Lord, we are still in person. Praise the Lord for those who are watching online. And praise the Lord that all of these technologies we have today are able to make this happen, whether you're at home or whether you're sitting here today. So I praise the Lord for all of God's uses for these technologies so that we can continue to meet, whether it's remotely or not. I praise the Lord. The last verse, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold of eternal life, to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Do not be afraid to share your witness about heavenly things. Amen? So some of you might say, well, Marshall, you're a cook on the campus and you're a dorm dean. Um, so what's your ministry on the campus? And I said, well, the best way to show you the ministry on my campus is to show you. So that's what I'm going to do. I need a few volunteers. Or I can start calling names. Some young volunteers, too. Yeah, young at heart, come up here. Some of you might say, well, Marshall, what is your mission? Oh, yeah, come, come. I, I need about six or seven more. Come, come. What is your ministry, Marshall? What do you do on campus? I know you cook and you, you're the dorm dean and all that. Well, really, what is, what is your ministry? Well, what part of my ministry and part of the ministry that I have done for years and years and years, at least I see it as a ministry, is cooking. As you know, I have a chef's uniform on, and it's because I have been a chef for many years. But this is part of what I do. So today, I'm going to, is there more? Any more? Okay, I'll just use the four that I have here. So, I'm going to show you my ministry by showing you my ministry. All right, so I need you to grab these and this. And you can grab this. And you can grab this. And you can grab this. Grab that one. And you can grab that one. Okay. So at this time, we're going to have a ministry of cooking. So, Dan, can you come here? Yes. What do you have in your left hand? Looks like onions. Green onions, great. Open it up and pour it in. Ooh, just right. Great. Could you open up the other one? What do you have there? It looks like is this hot peppers? Sure. <laughs> I know why you're here. <laughs> I know why you're here. Okay, sprinkle that. That's hot crushed chili peppers. You want it all in there? <laughs> no. A little oh, bit more. Yeah, a little bit more. A little more. Whoa. A little bit more. Okay, thank you, Dan. Beautiful. You may see you see it. Okay, come on up. What do you have there? Onions. Do you like onions? No? That's okay. Maybe one day when you're at my size, you'll like onions. So you can open that and pour it in. Okay? All of it. Very good. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. All right. What do you have there? Yeah, those are chili pepper powder. So go ahead and shake that in. Whoa! You did tell me. I followed her. I hope you like it spicy. Oops, can you no problem. No, you can't scoop any back. Thank you. Uh, open the next one, but this time I'll tell you when to stop. Okay, okay go ahead. A little more. A little more. A little more. A little more. Yeah. Okay, good. Very good. Good thing I like spicy. Thank you, Yvette. That was awesome. Okay, so go ahead and what do you got there? That's sesame oil. Okay, go ahead and 
four of that around. Give me about half of that. Ooh, okay, good. I'll take that. What do we have there? Soy sauce. Give me a little bit of that. Ooh, good. Very good. All right, thank you very much. Okay. All right. Well, this is Shiracha. Yes, sir. And the last ingredient is this one. Okay, this is Veginase. Go ahead and scrape all that in. Okay. All right, go ahead and mix that. <laughs> I need a couple more volunteers with a spicy tongue. <laughs> okay, that looks good. Here you go. Give it a try. Ooh, good. All right, come on now. We need. Yeah, we'll just use the last two. Go ahead and stab one and try it. Got it. Like it? Hey, he likes it with all that spice. Well, thank you very much. Good, Dan? I'm on fire. <laughs> oh, after. My question to you is, what is your ministry? Now, if I were to ask those who came up and did this demonstration with me, how many of you think that you could duplicate this recipe right now? How about if I worked with you for maybe the next 10, maybe 8 or 10 lessons, and I did this over and over and over with you as you watch it carefully, how many think you could do it maybe after 10 times? Yeah? Yeah? That is my ministry. You see, when Ivan did a wonderful thing and added all that chili powder in there, I could have reacted a lot differently. But because I did not, and I, re I reacted the way I did, that's part of the ministry. You understand when I have kids come in the kitchen and I'm teaching them to cook and the deans to teach them to cook, and they make a mistake or they make something wrong or something like that, I say, hey, that's okay and we do something else, or we fix it, and it's no problem. And the kindness, the gentleness of what I just read in the verses, uh, that's part of the ministry, but I incorporate that into my profession. I incorporate that into my dorm deaning. My question to you is, what is your influence in your ministry that you have in the job that you're working at now? Well, you don't know where I work. It's really, really bad. I understand that, and I've worked at places that were really, really bad. But I decided in my mind that before I even go there, I'm going to pray for my workers, pray for my coworkers, pray for my really bad boss. I don't care. I'm still going to pray for them no matter what happens, and I'm still going to treat them the way I want to be treated and not the way they deserve to be treated. Also, the next thing I did is I made sure that they tasted the product. And why? It's because it's great that you have a ministry, but unless they can taste and see that the Lord is good, part of that is having them taste this. And guess what? Every time I share my recipe, I also share my testimony with people of how the Lord has blessed me with the knowledge so that I can make this recipe. You think I came up with this on my own? Oh, no. I believe that everything we do, everything we say, the Bible says we can do nothing without God. So therefore, even this little recipe here cannot be done without God himself. So therefore, this is part of my ministry. And in everything you do, don't be fooled. God can use it for your ministry. There's three things I want you to focus on, graduates, and you're going to be all my graduates. Three things I want you to focus on to take through through life. First thing is to be a generous person without being liked. Without being liked? What do you mean? 
It is amazing that when Jesus said, don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing, that's exactly what's happening. The opposite of that is happening on social media today. Every hop, jump, skip, dance, twirl, I hope people like it. Like, 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 like. Social media has gotten us conditioned to make people think that being liked all of the time to let your right and your left hand know what they're doing is a good thing. But Jesus said that is not. When you do something for others, it shouldn't be to gain praise. It shouldn't be to gain anything. One day there was this man and he would go, not one day, for a long period of time, this man would go to a drive through coffee shop. And as he would go to the drive through he would pay for his, and he said, the guy behind me, I'm paying for that guy too. Oh, do you know that guy? No, I don't know that guy, but I'm going to pay for the guy behind me. And every time he went to the coffee shop, he paid for the person behind him. Never knowing <laughs> that person, never knowing who, who paid for nothing. They just kept, and he never got any kind of accolade or any kind of praise for doing that. He just did it out of the kindness of his heart. Until one day, the local newspaper came out with an article, and you know what the article said? The article said, there is a man that we do not know who he is, but he actually, I was driving, coming through the drive-thru, and all of a sudden when I went to pay my coffee, the guy in the front said, said that he had paid for the coffee, and I had gotten that coffee, but here was what was so significant about it, is that Right before he was going to get that coffee, he, that person in the back car said, I'm going to get this coffee, and then I'm going to kill myself. That was the last thing he was going to do. But when he got that generous offer of free coffee, he changed his mind because he was obsessed to find out the goodness of people. There is still something good. And just by that little gesture, it stopped that man from committing suicide. So... Again, be generous without being liked. The second one, be honest person even when it's not convenient. Be an honest person even when it's not convenient. Um, there was a man, a pastor actually. I've told this story here before, but I'm going to to click here. man went to the hardware store, bought some supplies as he was leaving the hardware store and driving away, he decided at the next stoplight to count his change. He realized the cashier gave him too much. It's like, oh, man, and I'm already late for a meeting. And the pastor was all like, but oh, I, I got to turn around. I got to turn around and go back. So he turned around and went back, went back to the hardware store, got in the same line with the same lady. Finally, got, finally after waiting through the line, he got to the lady and he says, excuse me, ma'am, I just came back to the store, and here's my receipt, but you gave me too much change, and so I know you made that mistake, you give me too much change, I want to make that uh, back. The lady says, I did not make a mistake. And he said, pardon me? And he says, you see, last weekend, I went to your church, and I heard you preaching about honesty and integrity, and I just wanted to see if it was real. I'll see you next weekend. Be an honest person even when it's not convenient. I came here just about last Friday, and I've been going in and out of Home Depot myself and Walmart and so on, buying supplies, fixing the house and so on. Thanks to Dan, helped me at the house. It was amazing. But I went to uh, Walmart, and you know how you self-check out? So I was self-checking out, all the stuff like that. And I thought I got everything, and I wheeled myself out to the car, and I got everything in the car, I put everything in the car, and then I lift one of the bags on the bottom and realized it was one item that I forgot to scan. I was like, oh, no. So I said, okay. Now I hear this, I know this story, of course, and I'm going, of course I'm going to go back. I go back to the Walmart, and they said, sorry, it's closed. It was like 11 p.m. It said, sorry, it's closed, and I'm like, oh, okay. I guess I'll have to come back tomorrow when it's not convenient. And so I did. 
But I didn't tell anybody. I put it in my pocket. I went through the checkout. I scanned it, paid for it, and walked out. Nobody knew anything. I didn't see anybody. Nobody knew anything because I didn't want I didn't want nobody to know about it. But I thought this story that I had read about made an impact on my life. Years and years. This story that I read to you about that, that pastor was all like 20-something years ago. The last thing is know that God loves and cares for you even when you're not sure about him. And this is I'm telling the graduates. You know, in high school, a lot of kids start developing if they're going to believe in God or not. Is it going to be my faith or was my parents' faith and forget it? Or no, I, I, want, I want some of that. I, I, I just want to know how it works. And there are those that want to grab onto that. So know that God loves and cares for you even when you're not sure about him. A soldier was in a foxhole with his commander. And they were shooting and shooting and shooting going on. And one of the fellow soldiers that were out of the foxhole got shot. So the commander told the soldier, get out there and go get that guy. Bring him back. He's injured. And the guy kept looking at his watch, looking at his watch. He says, hey, I gave you a command. Get out there and go get the guy and bring him back. He kept looking at his watch, looking at his watch. And he said, are you hearing me? I told you to get out there. And all of a sudden, without any warning, he hops out of the hole. He runs, grabs the guy. Bullets are flying everywhere. He brings them back in the hole. And all of a sudden, he's like, they're safe. And they're like, the commander looked at him and says, why didn't you go the first time that I told you? You know that you can get in a lot of trouble. And he says, listen, I don't even believe in God. I, in fact, I would consider myself an atheist. That's what the guy told the commander. But you know what? Before I left to come to the military, every day at this time, my grandma said she would pray for me. So I know I'll be protected right at this time. Again, know that God loves and cares for you even when you're not sure about him. The parable about the sower and the seed. I'm going to just rush through it really quickly. The parable talks about four different soils. The seeds get planted in the soils. Three of them actually have roots, right? The second one is about the wheat and the tares. And remember, the servant comes in and says, hey, somebody has sown some tares amongst the wheat. What should we do? Should we yank out the tares? And he says, no. Otherwise, you're going to disturb the roots. I'm not, I'm saying, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, you're going to disturb the roots of even the good ones, so leave them grow, and I'll make the decision afterwards what is the wheat and what is the tear. Don't disturb the roots. The third one is about a mustard seed, a seed that goes in the ground that turns into a huge tree. That is amazing. But this tree has leaves and has birds that nest in it and everything. It becomes a tree of life. Why? Because of the roots. The roots are everything. There was a, there's something about this, and this is the title of my sermon. There's one thing. How many of you have planted something and the next day you got fruit? Anybody? No. Not even if you're making sprouts. It still takes a couple of days for even sprouts to actually come out. If all you're doing is alfalfa or what? So it still takes time. So you have to wait for it. There is something at Hawaii Mission Academy campus that happens once a year. It's called the Flower Festival. And I was trying to figure out what on the campus has exposed the roots of the teachers, of the students, and everybody around. What is that thing that can expose the roots so that we can see the roots of the growth of our kids but not damage them? Because if you yank anything out of it, the roots and try to plant them back again, it doesn't grow back the same or it might even die. So how can we gently look at the roots of the students? What activity can that be? And this is called the Flower Festival. They do it at the end of the year. They hand out the yearbooks. But at this Flower Festival, everybody goes up front. They grab flowers. And they're up there. And they're thanking either a fellow classmate or a teacher or a class or a group of friends. And they're thankful for what they've done for them through the past year or years that they've been on campus. So they start with the seniors, juniors, sophomore, freshmen, and eventually 
all of the faculty will go up there. By the end, it's a mess. Everybody is crying. I mean crying because the students can't even get the words out of how impactful other students or faculty were to them. And at that one flower festival, we actually see the exposure of the roots of people by the way they are thanking others, and they are grateful. And I saw that service this year. I was crying the whole time. It was amazing. I wish we could do that at each church. That would be just so amazing. It would revitalize some things. And you say, well, wait a minute. You're seeing their roots, but how in the world can you do that? How can you do that throughout the year? I do hydroponics. Anybody hydroponic? Where roots are grown into water, the nutrients are put into the water, and the things are absorbed. Through the water, and I believe the water spiritually represents the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, you can actually see other people's roots, and only through the Holy Spirit, and safely and gently go to them, care for them, love one another. So if you want to see each other's roots, pray to the Holy Spirit how you can reach out. Through this pandemic, so many roots have been exposed. People who said, man, I, I am so glad for this pandemic. I didn't like being around people anyway. Others say, man, because of this pandemic, I'm not able to meet with people. I am so sad. I'm depressed. And it goes both directions. It goes, people's roots were totally exposed through this pandemic and still are being exposed to this pandemic. I am thankful for this pandemic. Now it's for our turn as a church to reach out to be a blessing to others, to, to use your skills that God has given you for your ministry and wherever you're at. My mom picked me up from high school. When I graduated, we were traveling back to home in Papaiko, and she said, Marshall, all right, you just graduated from HMA. What did you learn? And I told her, nothing. <laughs> what? <laughs> nothing. Oh, wait, 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 mom. Mom, mom, mom. I learned one thing. One thing I learned, I learned the Bible. And she said, you learned the Bible? Yes, that's all I can remember, is the Bible and the Bible stories and, and the lessons from that. That's all I remember. Now, was I a committed Christian, solid in the faith and everything at, at 18, 19 years old? No. But the seeds got planted in high school. It took 15 years before the roots started to go down and actually grow at age 24 when I committed my life, my heart to the Lord. 15 years for that seed to crack open this thick skull of mine. Really. And I thank God. I, I, I wish it happened sooner, but you know what? God's timing is perfect, so I'm not going to complain. He's used all of the goods, bads, and the uglies in my life so that I have the ministry I have today. My last thing I'm going to share is this. This is my testimony in a song, and it actually goes like this. I serve a risen Savior. He's in this world today. I know that he's living, whatever men may say. I don't care. He's living. I see his hand of mercy, and I hear his voice of cheer, and just in time I need him. He's always near. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. Oh, wow. One amen. He walks with me and he talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives. He lives salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. I know it. In all the world around me, I see his loving care. And though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the stormy blasts. The day of his appearing will come at last. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with you. And he talks with you along life's narrow way. He lives. He lives. Salvation to impart. You, I ask you how you know he lives. And I know he lives within your heart. May we stand for our closing here.
Now, Lord, as we uh, leave this place today, may we not forget our call. Whatever we do and wherever you send us, that we are to be waiting upon you and also looking to see how we can pray for one another, how we can care for one another, and that the roots that we see growing amongst our people, if there's no roots at all, Lord, help us to be, to be a planter of seed so that roots can grow in the persons and the people around us. Thank you again. In your precious name we pray. Amen.